Welcome to my channel, I'm Denny, and in this box I have my second Celine bag. The first Celine bag that I bought was the Celine Edge, and if you missed the unboxing video of that bag, go ahead and check it out after this video. I've linked it in the description box below. So this is another pre-loved item that I purchased off Vestia Collective. Definitely doing a true unboxing for this one because I selected direct shipping, which meant that it did not go through any of Vestia Collective's checking or authentication process. So if anything goes a little bit haywire in this unboxing, I then have the evidence on video. So in terms of what to expect, as per usual, this is the listing of the item over here. So it's listed as a Celine cloth bag. It's a barrel style bag or a doctor style bag with two front pockets and two top handles for shoulder carry. It's mostly made of nylon with some leather trims and the handles are made of leather. It has a zipper pull up the top and it's all in silver hardware. There's some small side pockets. Looking at this mod shot over here, it's looking like quite a sizable bag and it's meant to be in really good condition and certainly looks to be the case from the pictures. It measures 30 centimeters across. However, this box is looking quite small over here. So it's probably very squashed down, but she does feel super light. Um, which I expect for nylon. So after the unboxing, I will share with you some close-ups, I'll share with you the price, I'll give you a story time as well as some modeling shots. Let's get it started. Okay, it's come in this dust bag. One, two, ta-da! Oops, there she is. Oh, she's very soft and... Oh, wow! Oh wow, the nylon is very thin. <laughs> She's very puffy. Yeah, well, it's in pretty good condition. In terms of the nylon, it mostly looks okay. There's a few pulls in the back of the bag. They're pretty small and she doesn't smell, which is nice. Check all the pockets. Sometimes people leave money behind. Any money in here? Any money in there? Any money in this one? No. No. Okay. Does she look a bit like a nappy bag? That's okay. I'm a mom. Here she is. So this is a Celine bag that is made of nylon. So the nylon is actually really thin. I didn't expect it to be this thin. I thought it'd be something a bit thicker. Um, the bag is quite padded and she is so smooshy. <laughs> um, so she's got to be really really comfortable to carry. Most of the weight of this bag comes from the handles in fact and probably a little bit from the hardware. So she's a medium-sized bag. For me a medium-sized bag is a bag that fits um, at least a water bottle or a small umbrella and she'll easily fit that. In terms of dimensions she measures 30 centimeters across 16 centimeters in height, 11 centimeters in depth and the strap drop is 20 centimeters. These buttons here are all really tight. Um, I'm guessing that the last owner either never used the front pockets or she never opened it anyway. They're pretty small, so that's my phone over there. I could fit her in, obviously I wouldn't button her up, um, but I guess for quick access every once in a while, I could still stick her into the front pocket sometimes. In any case, the best thing about bags like these is that um, they're quite shallow. It's usually really easy to find things in this bag, especially when they're shoulder bags and you're just sitting under your armpit. It's actually really easy to find things <laughs> in these kinds of bags and that's why I love them. They're really practical. There are these silver buttons over here and they have the Celine Triumph logo on it. Some of them are mildly scratched. I don't think it's a big deal. The leather is still in really good condition. It's really nice and soft. The zipper pull is not bad. It's it's, yeah, the zipper pull is not bad. The thing is if I use this bag because it's so slouchy, I probably would just leave it unzipped because you can just clamp it um, under your shoulder. There is a zippered slip pocket on the inside. That zipper pull is super stiff. So if I was to use that pocket, I probably wouldn't zip it up. So the thing about these buttons being so stiff, my concern about constantly pulling at these buttons is that since the nylon is so thin, I probably won't be buttoning these buttons down. I could keep sort of non-valuable small items in here like tissue paper or something like that. So that's the front of the bag. It's got two pockets and on the side of the bag, there is a little pocket over here on both sides. And then on the back, it is 
plain. That's what the bottom looks like. It's got no feet. That's what the inside looks like. It is one open space plus a zippered slip pocket. Obviously, I don't know the name of this bag or what era it's from. And if you happen to know, please leave me a comment because I'd be really interested. In terms of how much I paid, I paid 280 Australian dollars for her in total. So that's for the price of the bag plus delivery. And I think that is a freaking good deal for a Celine bag. So because the seller and I are both in Australia, I was able to select direct shipping. Now, all the other times where I've purchased off Vestia Collective, they've been items that have been based in other countries, and I have never had the option of selecting direct shipping. This means that the item has to go to Vestia Collective for checking and authentication, and that's a step that I cannot skip. And of course, if the item is coming from overseas, I also have to pay import duties and taxes. So for that reason, I decided to skip sending it to Vestia Collective for checking. So if I had selected to send this back to Vestia Collective for checking and authentication which to be honest I was considering anyway I would have had to pay for the authentication fees as well as a higher postage fees as well as import duties and taxes because the item has left the country and come back in which in my opinion was kind of ridiculous because you know it came from Australia <laughs> I don't remember the exact amount, but I think it was an extra $70 or $80. I selected direct shipping anyway because looking at the seller's profile, she's actually sold a lot on Vestia Collective, so 309 items sold at the time when I purchased from her. She also has quite a lot of items for sale, so she looks like a very established consigner or reseller. So after I finish filming this video, I am going to get this bag authenticated by Luxury Authentication Australia, and I will leave the verdict right here. So in terms of how I ended up with this bag, you guys may remember this video over here where I reviewed my coach swinger in nylon and I absolutely loved her. And since then, I've been keeping my eye out for another nylon bag. And because Prada is very well known for their nylon, I was looking out for Prada nylon bags. And obviously they had to be reasonably priced because I just bought my Birkin 25, so I'm trying to be good with my spending. This one over here I was eyeing for the longest time. I thought it was such a nice bag. It was listed as unused. For my budget, I felt it was relatively reasonable. I tried to negotiate with the seller to bring the price down a little bit, of course, but I was outbid by somebody else in that process, so I missed out on that bag. So, of course, the hunt continued for another nylon bag. And instead of looking for Prada nylon bags, I decided just to search for nylon bags, and this one turned turned up. And the first thing that drew me to this bag was actually the shape of the bag. And I know that this shape is not currently trendy. In any case, I generally like the shape of this kind of bag anyway. I like east-west orientation bags that kind of are a little bit of a barrel shape with a double top handle. In university, I was carrying a very similar handbag made of pleather. I used that till she ripped apart. <laughs> and I found her really handy to use. So yeah, it's, it's not that trendy right now. Although Louis Vuitton has their city bag, which which was not too long ago re-released and I'm also a really big fan of the Hermes Victoria bag which is a doctor bag but I'm very sure I'm not going to get the Victoria bag because I know that that bag is going to be too heavy for me to enjoy. And the other bag that I'm a big fan of that has a very similar silhouette is the Louis Vuitton Papillon bag. I know I've said before on my channel that I do not like bags with two front pockets side by side in front because it looks like female anatomy. <laughs> I roasted one of the Louis Vuitton, I think it was like the military bag or something like that in this video over here because, you know, it's got two front pockets. Anyway, um, I feel like this one's not so bad because it's black on black, so it's a little bit more subtle. The ones that I was really bothered by were the Mimpro ones that had big round buttons right in the middle. In any case, because this one has two silver buttons on either side, this one has a manlier look, so I think it's a little bit less obscene, if you can see what I mean. <laughs> Let me know your opinion. Do you think this kind of trend is going to come back? Am I right in the trend? Am I past the trend? <laughs> as long as this bag comes back as authentic, I am very very pleased with her. I can see myself getting a lot of use out of her and really enjoying her. To watch next, I would recommend this video over here which is the unboxing video of my Celine Edge bag.